Welcome to Adult Sunday School at Christ Church Tyler. Great to be with you this morning. Much rather be with you in person, but I guess this is the best we can do right now. Let's begin with a word of prayer. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Give us grace, O Lord, to answer readily the call of our Savior Jesus Christ and proclaim to all people the good news of His salvation that we in the whole world may perceive the glory of his marvelous works, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Well, I think that's what we find in Handel's Messiah. That's what we find in, in the lyrics. Uh, the lyrics taken directly from the King James Version of the Bible put together by a man named Charles Jennings. And of course, uh, they, Handel took those words from the Bible and put music to them, and we have this, this uh, beautiful piece. Today, uh, we continue our study with Jesus' ministry. Uh, remember the, the motto for this whole piece of music, Majora Conimus. Latin for let us sing of greater things. Now last week we found Advent themes and we uh, saw the Messiah's birth prophesied. We were anticipating the celebration of his birth and his coming again. Those Advent themes relied heavily on the prophet Isaiah. And we went into Christmas, uh, the Messiah's birth fulfilled, celebrating the birth of Jesus from the Gospel of Luke. And remember that last chorus, glory to God. So epiphany, by way of review, is showing forth or appearance or manifestation. In epiphany, we see that Jesus is the revelation of God. And it's through him that we see God's glory face to face. And our lectionary readings during epiphany deal, first of all, on the feast day of the Epiphany, January 6th, we have that great story of the three kings, uh, the Magi, who follow the star to Bethlehem, to Jesus, to the manger. Then on the first Sunday of Epiphany, we have Jesus' baptism in the River Jordan by his cousin, John the Baptist. And we, see, we hear God's voice affirming him as his son, and we see the Holy Spirit in the form of a dove, a light on him. Uh, then the readings continue with Jesus' ministry. Again, his manifestation, his revelation as Messiah. And the last uh, Sunday of Epiphany is always the reading of the Transfiguration from one of the Gospels. But in all of this, Christ is the light. He's the light who shines through the darkness and brings God's grace to all. Now, this section of the Messiah that we're on today, this, I'd call it the Epiphany section, it focuses on Jesus' ministry. And we began with uh, a soprano, and she uh, sings, Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. Shout, O daughter of Jerusalem. Behold, thy king cometh unto thee. He is the righteous Savior and he shall speak peace unto, unto the heathen. Rejoice greatly. That's from Zechariah chapter 9, verses 9 through 10. Now last week I promised to show you the Sydney Opera House, and here it is, uh, the, this orchestra and chorus. Remember the chorus has 600 people in it. It's the Sydney Australia Philharmonia. I think they, they do a, a beautiful job.
This portion of Messiah was taken from Zechariah chapter 9, and I'd like to read that passage uh, of Scripture to you from the um, English Standard Version. Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. Shout aloud, O daughter of, Israel, of Jerusalem. Behold, your king is coming to you, righteous and having salvation is he. Humble and mounted on a donkey, on a colt the foal of a donkey. I will cut off the chariot from Ephraim and the war horse from Jerusalem, and the battle bow shall be cut off, and he shall speak peace to the nations. His rule shall be from sea to sea and from the river to the ends of the earth. Now, during Epiphany, the readings focus on how Christ is revealed in the world. And in Messiah, this joy is the response to Christ's birth. Uh, since joy is the, the, effect, the effect most immediately associated with the birth of Christ, Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion, is really suitable uh, for this place in the, in, in the uh, music. And this music that Handel wrote expresses joy, it really does. It's interesting that St. Augustine called singing in jubilation, that was his term for it. He says it is to grasp the fact that what is sung in the heart cannot be articulated in words. Think of people who sing at harvest time or in the vineyard. They begin by caroling their joy in words, but after a while they seem to be so full of gladness that they find words no longer adequate to express it. So they abandon distinct syllables and words and resort to a single cry of jubilant happiness. And I think we saw that in this piece with the soprano. And last week, or week before last, when we heard the overture, um, that suggested the coming of royalty, the coming of a king. It, it announced the coming of Jesus. But until now in Messiah, he hasn't been identified, but he is now. And uh, this, this passage from Zechariah is quoted both by Matthew and John in, in their gospels. And it's a king coming to make peace. Um, the prophet Zechariah announces the coming of a king as the occasion of joyful expectation for the people of Jerusalem. And we can't help but see Jesus on that foal riding into Jerusalem. And all four gospels remember Zechariah's prophecy as Jesus enters that holy city, begins his final journey to the cross. But Zechariah is describing a king who brings peace, peace to all people. And I want to read you um, that passage from Matthew 21. Now, when they drew near to Jerusalem and came, came to Bethpage, to the Mount of Olives, then Jesus sent two disciples, saying to them, Go into the village in front of you, and immediately you'll find a donkey tied and a colt with her. Untie them and bring them to me. If anyone says anything to you, you shall say, The Lord needs them, and he will send them at once. This took place to fulfill what was spoken by the prophet, saying, Say to the daughter of Zion, Behold, your king is coming to you, humble and mounted on a donkey, on a colt, the foal of a beast of burden. The disciples went and did as Jesus had directed them. They brought the donkey and the colt and put on them their cloaks, and he sat on them. Most of the crowd spread their cloaks on the road, and others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. And the crowds that went before him and that followed him were shouting, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. And when he entered Jerusalem, the whole city was stirred up saying, who is this? And the crowd said, This is the prophet Jesus from Nazareth of Galilee. And then the Messiah continues, Then, the, then shall the eyes of the blind be opened, and the ears of the deaf unstopped. Then shall the lame man leap as an heart, and the tongue of the dumb shall sing.
And now reading that passage from Isaiah 35 from the English Standard Version of the Bible. Then the eyes of the blind shall be opened, and the ears of the deaf unstopped. Then shall the lame man leap like a deer, and the tongue of the mute sing for joy. For waters break forth in the wilderness, and streams in the desert. The uh, epiphanary, the, the epiphany lectionary readings feature Jesus teaching and healing and his miracles as they, they're, they're manifestations of his messiahship. And um, Jesus witnessed, witnesses to this when John the Baptist sends to ask if he is the expected one. He says, go and tell John what you hear and see. The blind receive their sight, the lame walk, the lepers are cleansed, the deaf hear, the dead are raised, the poor have good news brought to them. That's from Matthew chapter 11. And in, in Messiah, Jennings relies heavily on the prophets, especially Isaiah, to explain Jesus' mission. And Jesus does too. From Luke chapter four, this is Jesus speaking. Jesus came to Nazareth where he had been brought up and as was his custom he went to the synagogue on the Sabbath day and he stood up to read and the scroll of the prophet Isaiah was given to him he unrolled the scroll and found the place where it was written the Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor he has sent me to proclaim liberty to the captives and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. And he rolled up the scroll and gave it back to the attendant and sat down. And the eyes of all in the synagogue were fixed on him. And he began to say to them, today this scripture has been fulfilled in your hearing. And uh, an example of one of these healings and this is a blind man. This is from Luke chapter 18. As he drew near to Jericho, a blind man was sitting by the roadside begging. And hearing a crowd going by, he inquired what this meant. They told him, Jesus of Nazareth is passing by. And he cried out, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. And those who were in front rebuked him, telling him to be silent. But he cried out all the more, Son of David, have mercy on me. And Jesus stopped and commanded him to be brought to him. And when he came near, he asked him, What do you want me to do for you? He said, Lord, let me recover my sight. Jesus said to him, Recover your sight. Your faith has made you well. And immediately he recovered his sight and followed him, glorifying God. And all the people, when they saw it, gave praise to God. Gave praise to God. So it's the sign of the time of salvation, ushered in by the one who is expected. Jesus um, witnesses to that through through the prophets, and and that's I think why why Isaiah is so heavily emphasized here in Messiah. The re restoration of health. An agency is is a sign of Jesus divinity and his divinity revives all people for a new age marked by God's peace and salvation and and now we come to um, the, the alto again singing, he shall feed his flock like a shepherd and he shall gather the lambs with his arm and carry them in his bosom and gently lead those that are with young from Isaiah chapter 40.
And now from the ESV, the passage we just heard sung uh, from Isaiah chapter 40. Behold, the Lord God comes with might, and his arm rules for him. Behold, his reward is with him, and his recompense before him. He will tend his flock like a shepherd. He will gather the lambs in his arms. He will carry them in his bosom and gently lead those that are with young. So the God proclaimed by Isaiah comes with great strength, with uh, mighty arms outstretched. But it's interesting, it's not the strength of a, of a bloody ruler, a violent brute, or some demanding judge, because God's strength appears in gentleness. Um, it, this image of the shepherd, the God, uh, our God is, uh, is strong but, but gentle. And he gathers together the wounded, uh, the scattered flock. Remember Isaiah is speaking to these people in exile. Um, God draws together the scattered lambs of Judah, rebuilds Zion, and um, it's clear that a shepherd as strong and compassionate as the one Isaiah describes uses his power to guide and care for the sheep, not scatter and punish. This um, is described in John chapter 10. This is one of Jesus' I am sayings in the Gospel of John. Uh, Jesus says, truly, truly, I say to you, he who does not enter the sheepfold by the door, but climbs in by another way, that man is a thief and a robber. But he who enters by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. To him the gatekeeper opens, the sheep hear his voice, and he calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he has brought out all his own, he goes before them, and the sheep follow him, for they know his voice. A stranger they will not follow, but they will flee from him, for they do not know the voice of strangers. This figure of speech Jesus used with them, but they did not understand what he was saying to them. So Jesus again said to them, truly, truly, I say to you, I am the door of the sheep. All who come before me, who came before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not listen to them. I am the door. If anyone enters by me, he will be saved and will go in and out and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. He who is a hired hand and not a shepherd who does not own the sheep sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and flees and the wolf snatches them and scatters them. He flees because he's a hired hand and cares nothing for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my own and my own know me, just as the Father knows me and I know the Father. And I lay down my life for the sheep. And I have other sheep that are not of this fold. I must bring them also and they will listen to my voice. So there will be one flock, one shepherd. For this reason the Father loves me, because I lay down my life, that I may, may take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down of my own accord. I have authority to lay it down, and I have authority to take it up again. This charge have I received from my Father. So Jennings chooses the libretto, this part one of its of this oratorio with uh, the Gospel of Matthew. And here, Jesus offers comfort uh, alongside reminders of our own weakness in, in light of God's glory. So you'll hear it now sung, Come unto him, all ye that labor, come unto him that are heavy laden, and he will give you rest. Take his yoke upon you and learn of him, for he is meek and lowly of heart, and ye shall find rest unto your souls. That's from Matthew chapter 11, verses 28 through 29.
Matthew chapter 11, verses 28 through 30. Come to me, all who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Well, Jewish writings had for a thousand years or more spoken warmly about the wisdom of the wise. Uh, God gave wisdom to those who feared him. And there was a long tradition of studying the law, the Torah. And um, there, were, there was an indication that those who devoted themselves to learning the law and trying to find its finer points would become wise and they would know God. But for the average Jew of Jesus' day, this put wisdom completely out of reach. It was like trying to be a brain surgeon or a test pilot for people today. You needed to be a scholar. You needed to be trained in languages and literature. And you had to have time to ponder and think and discuss the weighty and, co weighty and complicated issues. But Jesus cut through all that with one stroke. He says, no, you need to approach God as a little child. Uh, Jesus had come to know his father the way a son does, not by studying books about him, but by living in his presence, listening for his voice, and learning from him as an apprentice does from a master by watching and imitating. And he was now discovering that the wise and learned were getting nowhere. And it was these little people, the poor, the sinners, the tax collector, ordinary people were discovering more about God simply by following him, Jesus. Come to me, he said. The Pharisees had spoken of people being carried to carry the yoke of Torah, the heavy burden of Jewish law with all its commandments. But Jesus offered a different yoke because it came from his mercy and love and was easy to bear. The welcome he offers for all who abandon them, themselves to his mercy is the welcome God offers through him. This is the invitation that lets us see who the Father really is and encourages us to come into his loving, welcoming presence. And remember, I said earlier that deism was on the rise in England. It was a product of the Enlightenment where people thought that human beings could progress more and more and more and save themselves. But there's no way a person can't save himself through intellectual prowess or personal magnetism. They need the comforting arms of Jesus. To those who recognize the need for a savior, Jesus comes with comfort, comfort and he'll lift life's burdens, offer rest, even for the lonely soul. And now, to conclude uh, today, his yoke is easy and his burden is, is light.
ladies and gentlemen, that's it for uh, today. Uh, next week, we'll look at Jesus' crucifixion as um, portrayed in Handel's Messiah. Remember, Jesus said, I'm the good shepherd, and I lay down my life for my sheep. And that's what we will be studying uh, next week. So the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen.